And you see how how great you look. There you are. Welcome to the stream, Welcome. everybody. That took way too long. I'm sorry, guys. We're so late. Like, by 15 minutes, almost. I was organizing a box downstairs. It isn't your fault. It's my fault. I guess I had to go and take a shower or something like well, that. Well, we found a great deal on a faucet that we desperately needed. We bought a faucet off of Amazon. Ooh, an Amazon and faucet. We did. We bought one off of Amazon about a year and a half ago. It was crap. Well, um, because the, it was. the the spout is like it was designed for like a mini sink that's yeah, like it was this more big for a bar sink than it was uh -huh. for a kitchen sink and they really should have and it, was, it that way it's because it had the spray head that went to a good length it's like this that the spray head and that was a good place but that was only for the shower thing yeah and you couldn't the actual faucet was like this far yeah and you couldn't leave the so he, the spray head on mm -hmm. without holding it it had to be held constantly and when you can't wash a dish under running water do you when want to be you, shown? When you, when you don't have, when you have only one hand, it's it's a difficult thing to do. So, anyway, it was I, pretty I would crappy, and like it would, it would fool you every time, and you'd end up either with a shower, or you'd end up with water all along the back part of your sink, where there mm -hmm. is no real drainage. Because this is, this is the faucet, and this is the back part. And lo and How do we live with that for a year and a half? Well... You know, I, I just, I, I. You wanted to like my, it. Yeah, under my breath, I kept saying, you'll get used to this. You'll get used to this. I would turn the water pressure down. Dad would turn the water pressure back up. It was like a, an unspoken rant that we'd have with each other. Like, um, I'll show you, I'll turn it up full force. And, and then me saying, I'll show you, I'll just turn it down. I'm and cleaning. it wasn't necessarily an I sh I'll show you sort of thing. It was a. I just don't like getting a shower every time that I try to rinse off a dish. And it was a really, I don't know, I just absolutely had this hate, hate, hate relationship with the dang thing. It was never even a love-hate relationship. I just desperately wanted it to be a nice thing. And it uh -huh. never was. But lo and behold, it, I think, began to rot out the sink underneath was it that thing? I thought it well, was like the there reverse was a, osmosis. There was a slow drip so in no, reverse. Yeah, there yeah was that was broken also. The There's this little plastic piece. But I honestly think that we had such an excess of, of spillage over the edge that eventually it just rotted out mm -hmm. the, the board underneath our sink. And it just was about as irritating as you could get. Uh-huh. So, um, and it, all it was out, all mold you know, and like seriously, we had to rip it out. We had to rip the boards out. Now we have to source this super long board to go along like our whole wall for the kitchen. It's a big mess. All yeah. because it, all thanks to that Amazon faucet. It seemed like a good deal. Wasn't it like a hundred bucks? It was less than a hundred bucks and it was, it was a, a, a good $200 faucet. It was a commercial grade, um, spray head. So it, and we had had it up to our eyeballs with those pull down spray heads that you buy for two hundred dollars in, in Lowe's and Home Depot and the, all of the other big boxes. And mm -hmm. um, you know we had had it up to our eyeballs with that because it would break and then it would start to drip and then we wouldn't. Are have you talking a about the last one? The last one that we because had. Because we, we and had to duct always, tape that together with, and yeah, it, and the, the, the faucet lifetime, they always replaced it, but you, they always come with lifetime warranty, so you could replace it as long as you could remember the number. And I, I'll I, toward the end of my cussing, I think they were on speed dial because I just. It would every time I turned around, it felt like the spray head was breaking. Mm -hmm. And it's we didn't manhandle it. We didn't pull it so far that it you know, wasn't reaching. It <laughs> wasn't. Guess. It wasn't anything that I think that we did wrong. But um, we found a great deal today on Walmart, and uh, they were having their uh, their Fourth of July day sale. And so we went and bought a Peerless uh, $100 faucet. Retails for $130 at Home Depot. Retails for $170 at another big box. And so we went to Walmart, and they had it on sale for $70. So we were able to get a great faucet for a even better price, and it's a Peerless. Mm -hmm. um, so a good name brand. Good name brand, lifetime warranty. So It'll probably break, let's be honest. 
It will because it's yet again another pull down spray head. All of and, them are manufactured um, in the same factory in China, more than yeah, likely. Yeah, pretty much. Or it's pretty one, much. And that, that's just how it works and now. It's, it's going to break. But so I'm down there trying to organize um, the drawers and the other what naughty knots that we have on our counter. Just that we just can get it all cleaned up. Yeah, and we're just so plumb out of space in our kitchen that, um, that but we're going to need the room because mm -hmm. once that sink comes out, you need the room on your counter to put it somewhere. So that's where I was. Mm -hmm. trying to organize that and that's what made me late so i apologize but everyone for i was late, i was the one that was late though because i i said oh you want to come up and you said yes and then we got all in here and were you sitting in here or were you putting away clothes when i was showering i was putting away clothes okay because i was showering and she was putting away clothes and then because I really needed to shower, guys. You know, the problem with summer is that you don't get up and do stuff regularly, like a real job or like school or something like that. So you just, you don't shower, you don't brush your teeth, and it was yucky and gross and yeah. So I decided to shower, and now I feel all nice and clean. Yeah. And I won't the... make the pool all dirty when I <laughs> get when in I there. Get in, it's not going to be all stanky. With uh -huh. your Speaking of the pool, I did get to uh, clean all of this algae. I, our, our pressure washer, I don't know if he said this before, but our pr pressure washer did break. It started to leak oil. I don't know how that happened. It was a brand new unit like two or three years ago. And it started to leak oil, so we brought it in. Got a on that, too. Uh -huh. But let me, let me go. So, we went to Home Depot. That was the place that we bought it. Then we said, you know, this is broken. This is not what it's supposed to do. And they said, well, uh, we're not going to replace it, which is the first problem. They should have replaced it. There was a faulty unit, clearly. We did not do anything wrong to make it leak oil. We just used it like it was intended. So they should have replaced it, but they didn't. Uh, they said, well, why don't you go to this guy? This is your local repairman shop, your mechanical shop. So he went to him. He kept it for like a month or two because he went on vacation. So he was on vacation for a month or two, keeping our unit. And when, once it got done, it was supposed to be a free repair if he was able to find a part and everything to fix it. Because after it was, it was done, uh huh, it was under warranty. Like we just bought it, so after after he got it back, he said I wasn't able to find a problem. All he did was pop the top off. I wasn't able to find a problem. That's gonna be eighty dollars. Well, what? he charged no, he charged one hundred and twenty dollars, and Dad was Seriously? outraged. Yeah, and Dad was outraged. He said one hundred and twenty dollars. The machine cost me, you know, almost a little bit more than that. And he's like, well, these things are disposable. And Dad was like. I can't believe this. And he said, well, if I would have found a problem, it would have been free. And Dad said, they told me that I needed to bring it to you. They wouldn't warranty it any other way. And the guy said, well, I'm sorry, but there's nothing wrong with it. So for my time... It's leaking oil! That's what I need. For my time, that's what I need. And, and Dad said, well, I'm not paying that. You can keep the damn thing. You know, I don't, I don't want... I'm not paying that. And the guy said, well, how about 80 then? Since we kept it for so long. So then Dad paid 80 But, um... Otherwise, we would not have had anything. But I think our old power washer works better than that one. It's just louder and, it, and it's gas powered. We liked this one because it was electric. Mm -hmm. And the guy then said, how is it's it a unit. How now, does it not have anything wrong with it if it's leaking oil? I don't know. If it's a sealed unit. How can you get into it and would, find something to fix? Why would Home Depot even say, well, yeah, we can fix it? If it's a sealed unit, then it's not intended to be taken apart. They should have taken it, thrown it away, and given us a full refund and a new one. If That's what wanted. they should have done. Yeah. Anyway, so that was a big rant and rave from two years ago or three years ago. Still makes Dad upset. But, no, but um, it makes us upset now because we are going to clean the pool with the pressure washer, but we weren't able to because he was like, you know, this is making a pretty bad sound, mind Tech. I, I think we should stop pressure washing. It was, it was so I had to turn it off. Mind. I had to I had to downgrade to this unit. It's a re still a really nice pressure washer. It just screws well, onto your hose, but I had to downgrade to that. It's probably better so I wouldn't damage the plaster, plaster at all on the pool because right. I was kind of worried about that. It, I felt a lot of vibration when I was using that washer. Uh, but once I put this other one on, I was able to go and remove all the algae from the sides and the steps 
all the crevices where I couldn't get a brush in there without hurting you know, myself. I, I did hurt myself with the brush. You did. I do well, have yeah, some it's sores. Yeah, a brush, but I'm going to tell you, if you're a pool owner and you've got algae that likes to hide in the crevices of your of your why stairs. Don't you, why don't you show it? Because it's no, kind of weird that I, no, when we're 50-50 no. talking, I'm just sitting there just doing nothing. Well, you nothing. just pretend that I'm across from you. Just pretend that I'm sitting on that side of the table then. Okay. There we go. Because I, if you want to increase your viewers, you certainly don't want to show my face. What's wrong with it? No one watches us anyways. Well, very few people watch us. How about that? Let me correct it. <laughs> but go on about your story. I'm going to check this Twitter and get up Twitch. Hey, does it say we're currently... Well, I said Ed that. Rant? Okay, so it, it's Ed Rant, right? Uh-huh. Well, I've got a big one. Okay, why don't you start your rant? It's about your new principle. It is. So, you've all <sighs> heard me rant about the fact that I have this principal who's a bully. No, oh, you had. And, is and I have again. Incredibly unfair. And yes. does things on the basis of whether mm -hmm. she likes you or whether she dislikes you. And let me give whether you a hint you, she disliked her. Whether you. And for no reason. I never gave her a reason to dislike me i always do my job i do my job better than most people do their job i do it without complaint um never did i ever complain about her i always said now you know it's not fair to talk about her when she's not here and can't defend herself mm -hmm. but when i come home boy howdy would i rant and rave about <laughs> her and um you know but she was she was like that if if you're gonna do what it is that i want you to do even though you can give me a good reason why you shouldn't be doing it well then i'll make sure that you have everything that you want and i mean literally everything that you want mm -hmm. i'll make sure that you have the fancy blackboard that lights up magnetically with what, some what i said is that crap all the teachers that had those blackboards not not the white not the white dry erase boards, but the black dry erase boards with neon markers. I said all of those teachers are the ones that she likes. Because those are four thousand dollars. And they were horrible teachers usually. Not all of them, but most of them were bad teachers. But then there is one exception, one teacher that always complained about her because she was so unfair. She actually had a blackboard, so maybe I don't know if that happened. Maybe it was bribery. I don't know. <laughs> But, I mean, she would be the type that would say, I'm not even going to buy your supplies for you. Now, supplies are for kids. They're not for teachers. Mm -hmm. Supplies are never to make my life easy. After 20 years in education, it's for you to teach. I finally bought a $79 chair, mesh chair, because I have mm -hmm. problems sitting for a long time. So I like finally, that chair. <laughs> I finally, yeah, I Poor finally woman. bought a comfortable mesh chair for myself mm -hmm. with those monies that come from that fund because and I did this for one reason because every other teacher out of that fund buys all of these desk sorters and organizers and all of these really nice things, things to make their life easier but they don't spend the money on students tape I've always always spent the money on things mm -hmm. like tape and glue sticks and glue and hot glue and hot glue guns and and art supplies and you know things that we're going to use throughout the school year anyway she's you know i'm not going to give those to you because well you won't do Crazy. So, I don't regret. So she's leaving and i'm up in heaven you know just dancing it's just finally she's gone and maybe maybe we can finally make the right choice the best choice for our school system so that we can begin moving forward with, with you know, positivity. Mm -hmm. One of the other rants that I had. So I'm gonna withhold the name. I'm gonna withhold the big reveal for just. We're not. A we're not. Okay? We're not gonna dox ourselves. That's stupid. Um. What? One of the other rants that I had was that they hired a vice principal mm -hmm. at the end of um, the previous school year. I'll tell them. So he used to be the counselor at the junior high. That she, she works at a junior high and a high school. This man used to be the counselor at the junior high, and he was a huge power hog, a huge bully. He always thought that he was the principal or like the superintendent or the president of the United States of Mexico, even though he wasn't. He always right. thought he had that power. He was just a counselor, and he was just 
he made every teacher's life that was working on that junior high absolute H E double hockey sticks. Yeah, and even the the administrators and even the the office staff, mm-hmm. they were very very happy that he left to see him go. And once he, he left, he, he got transferred. his master's in education and and his certificate in in administration, and so he wanted to be the vice principal, and they didn't make him the vice principal at that school. And he thought that that was incredibly unfair because he had been there longer than the mm-hmm. woman that got the position. But they did make him the vice principal at another school in the same district. Yeah, within a sister school within the same district because it was a middle school and he had had all of his experience in middle schools. Mm-hmm. So, so they thought he would be the best choice for that. But, but then after as, that... As soon as the vice principal position mm-hmm. opened at Beta, at the At the high school that she works at, yeah. as soon as that position opened, then he was able to take it for some reason... He was able to transfer over from the sister school to the high school. And it was everybody outrageous. everybody was so happy. Oh, he's going to be great. He's going to be fabulous. I think he's a great choice. I really like the man. He listens. Huh? He does great things. And, of course, um, one of my co-workers, Ms. Jeter, and myself were, hmm. were gobstopped because why on earth... Um, why on earth would he be... Would you think that? I mean, wait until you get to know the man because the man... No, and they got to know a, him this year, didn't choice. they? Not a great choice. You certainly got and to know did, him. And they did, and he was he so horrible. much better uh-huh. than I expected him to he be. He thought he was just going to make but life But at, at the horrible. end of the year, he did two things that really, really upset me. Thing number one. Um, he, thing he one got, and thing two. Yeah, he got really quite, um, you know, power hungry. You know, to his head power hungry. At I'm, her. I'm, Not just yeah. at everyone, but at her at me. specifically. I'm, I'm the vice principal. Why on earth are you doing this or doing that? And then the second thing is that I didn't get evaluated, which is a huge no-no. I mean, the school could get fined big time. The district could get fined big time for having not done what they were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And he was the one that was supposed to evaluate me. <laughs> and when I brought it up to the three of them, the three administrators... Um, they said, oh, you, they no, each said, she was supposed to do it, yeah, no, he was supposed to do it. Miss Gonzalez, one of my mm, other, one of my other principals. Don't give names, though. Gonzalez is like saying Smith, right? Okay. I would hope. Um, there's a billion of them. Said, uh, it's me, I'm doing it, and um, I never saw her. I waited again, I sent a second email, or a third email, I sent the third email. And finally, um, it was too late. And I said, well, now, on the day that I'm supposed to be checking out, I can't give you my part three of the my PDOS. PDOS. I can't even give you my part two of my PDOS. Those are important things for teachers. Because of my, my professional development appraisal mm-hmm. systems documentation. I can't give that to you because I was never, I was never observed. And um, you were the one that was supposed to observe me, and she said I was not. And I said, in this email, you told me that you were. And she said, but I was not. I said, I would be in to evaluate you, but it was mm-hmm. not my job to evaluate you. And she pulled out the documentation that showed me that it was this vice principal that I've mm-hmm. been complaining about. It was his obligation to evaluate me. So I stopped him in the hallway, and... Um, he said, no, no, I, I evaluated Miss Jeter, but I wasn't supposed to evaluate you. Hmm? That was supposed to be her job. What about the documentation, And I said, you dude? evaluated Miss Jeter? And he said, well, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, well, she had filled out her part two, put it up online. I told her not to do that. I said, don't fill out the part two. He can respond then to the part two with whatever he wants to respond to it with, but don't do it until mm-hmm. you're supposed to, until you've been observed. Um, now all of these teachers are coming to me and saying, no, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to, to put up the part two before you get observed. And I said, well, then why can't we post it at the beginning of the year? Why do we have to wait until the middle of the year to post it? <laughs> well, uh, just some stupid regulation. Yeah, it's, it's, and, and that's neither here nor there because that's not the system that we're using next year at all. Like we're going to a brand new, different oh, no. evaluator They're going to mess it up, aren't they? Yeah, but, but we're <laughs> going to a different that's system just judging by them entirely. Anyway, so I'm sure that you've guessed my rant. And so I she gets a text. Because the principal who was a bully is leaving. I also heard rumor that she got fired because she was... Um, 
racist. Harassing, yeah, she was harassing somebody in a very racist Maybe. way. <laughs> and <laughs> we heard that the school district let her go because uh -huh. they got sued a grand amount of money for her racism. Mm -hmm. So they let her go. So I was elated, finally, that somebody called the pedal black, saw what it was that she did, um, recognized it, and actually felt pain because they had never done anything about it prior. So I was mm -hmm. elated. Only she gets to a find text. out today. Uh-huh, she gets a text today. Go, oh, guess who's the new principal? <sighs> Efran. Oh, the vice principal that was a bully. And let's just... I, I all have to say God works in certain ways, and I all I, think, I, I have to say... I think he's going I, to be better than the previous I principal. Had, I honestly in do. all of my years of education, I have had maybe a dozen and a half or more principals. principals he's going to be your second worst. And I have had three really good administrators. Mm -hmm. In the Only dozen three. and a half that I've had, I've had three that were worth anything. At least one of those three are still and your administrator. Yes, she she is. Maybe, okay, so maybe I've had four. Maybe I've had four. Oh, you didn't include um, her in that? No, I, I included. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> Well, there was one that I that I liked. I don't know if she ever really. She was always at bat for me. I just don't know if she was ever really, you know, in it 100%. But she was mm -hmm. always at bat for me. Um, I had one that was super fantastic, wonderful, out, you know, to the moon and back, um, mm -hmm. fabulous. And then I had one that was, eh, you know, but never really interfered, but never. But didn't interfere when they should have in the classroom. They gave you your space and let you do your thing, but they really should have been doing their job better because too many mm -hmm. people were able to get away with too many things that they should not have been able to get away with. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I've had very few really, really great administrators. And um, I was really hoping that there would be one that I just, I felt like she just, she, she, the, she had the kids. Um, their best interest in mind. She um, she was always very kind and considerate and thoughtful when it came to teachers and and how she chose to treat us um, in a very professional uh, four fingers professional I'm way. I was just uh, but anyway. So um, God has given me this again, and I am just praying. It's that gonna he be didn't, fine. Well, I'm just praying that He didn't give me somebody that. Because this this guy this guy is younger than me, so this guy can be here for the next twenty two years until you retire. Well, yeah, retirement. definitely until I retire. But he can be well past my retirement. Mm -hmm. And if he's not here for students to do the best thing that he can for students, um, if he insists that it's never the fault of okay, I was reading something today about discipline. Mm -hmm. And it was he's just a bully. He's a yeah. horrible teacher he's also. A horrible teacher, he tried to teach them about some testing thing and he's just like, uh, uh, you, you describe all of this to a teacher and the teacher's like, uh, uh, um, um, uh, you don't know? What, uh? are you not listening? And I'm like, oh my gosh, every single thing that you tell us not to do, you are demonstrating uh -huh. right now. And so that's, that's just how he, he. I think you're Bobby Pin. This music is horrible. Ooh, we anyway. got three viewers in the house. Hey, Welcome, everybody. So we're ranting and raving about uh -huh. education. So, Root. hey, one of the topics that I'd love to talk about, if we got any teachers in here at all, is something new. Uh, well, it's not new, new, but it's something that I'm trying this year. It's called restorative discipline. Um, restorative justice. Being Are those of, the, uh, restorative the, the restorative circles? Justice League. And, yeah, and as, a, part of, as a student, circles, I didn't like that. <laughs> well, I know that you didn't as a student because you didn't like sitting in the circle and then needing to share when uh -huh. you really didn't feel that it was appropriate for you to share. But uh, there's a lot of it felt like it felt like I was in an inmate or something. I get you, but there was a lot of there's a lot of stuff underneath it. You know, like the uh, the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of stuff underneath it. I think that restorative circles are just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. What's underneath it, I think, is really important. Like if we always, okay. So I'm reading an article about it, trying to learn more about it this morning, and, and one of the things that the, this um, 
spearheader, um, this Justice Leaguer, restorative Justice Leaguer, he calls himself, um, said was, you always hear the story about how a student throws a chair at a teacher. Oh, okay, so you don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk about restorative you always hear the story justice. About Okay, so what else can I rant about? No, why don't why don't you think they want to talk about that? Because we lost two viewers. It, it fluctuates all the time. Oh. That's one thing with Twitch; they don't have necessarily a consistent viewer count. I guess it is correct, but like the lurkers, they don't always show up. It's confusing. Viewers are confusing on Twitch. Okay, well, I'll keep talking about restorative. Discipline. Yeah, keep on. One thing I don't want to hear about it. is there's a student he guys he throws a chair at a teacher. Uh oh. Don't do that, guys. And That's not good. Most, don't don't yeah, throw and, chairs and at teachers. Most time, when you hear the story, you think um, that oh, kid is insane. Know, this, this kid uh -huh. and, and and what's you know this is terrible. What is he the said, teacher's what fault? I think, what I think I is th that's what I think. What the heck kind of relationships were established between the students from the get go the within teacher. that room between the students and the students and the students and the teacher? Uh huh. What did that the teacher do to pick him off so socially much? Socially acceptable for him to throw mm -hmm. a chair at him or her to throw a chair at the teacher, and he's not saying I'm not blaming the teacher for having not done his or her job, nor am I blaming the student for thinking that it was perfectly acceptable to pick a chair up and throw it at another human being. Neither of those two behaviors are appropriate. Mm -hmm. Neither of those two end results are what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that it must begin in a classroom with this growing of a culture mm -hmm. where we all they respect. They have a bad culture. Yeah, where we have this amount of respect. You can't just put respect up on the wall and expect students, you know, when I point to that poster, to say, ah. hey, hey, you're not doing that, you know. And there also has to be, like, this mutual thing that you build and and there's where restorative circles comes in because we all sit down and we talk about things that that are making us feel certain ways and because of that we grow closer to each other we mm -hmm. don't grow closer to each other when we when we um rules 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 yeah, follow we, them we, you even, idiots even when we share in the creating of the rules we still haven't created a culture where i completely and absolutely trust but once you. you do a trust fall once you talk to someone like a real human being once you talk to your teacher like a real human being i think teachers are like these big huge god figures but if they were like on the same level as kids and you like you like to do this i think the kids would be like well you know what I don't want to make the teacher mad. I honestly don't want to hurt their feelings instead of, ah, oh, let's, let's bite them because of all these rules and I want to break every single one of them. I'm an anarchist, my, man. Uh, an anarchist. If my parents say, don't do that, guess what? I'm going to do I'm gonna that. Rebel. I'm going to rebel. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that it does take some establishment, some getting getting there, but I don't know. Is it the latest and the greatest? Is it the next big wave? Is it the... The regurgitating something that happened 30 years ago and we're bringing it up yet again. Um, I think in all the education system is flawed because you bring kids that don't know how to do math. You sit them in a math classroom. You say wrong, try again, wrong, try again. That's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. You're an idiot. And then you say you're an idiot some more. You fail. You fail them. They have to repeat. They're laughed at. What they're good at is not, is not embodied. It, all it is is you suck at math. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. You're a failure. Yeah, you can't I, get into college now, so now you're going to get a bad job. And if we stop and reflect on what the teacher was perhaps capable of doing at that very moment would be to... Um, the teacher to also can easily just destroy someone if they say, let's say you're in a singing class and you're singing along and the singing teacher's like, you absolutely suck. What is wrong with you? If the you teacher's don't like light that, up my life, that's for sure. You're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna I'm sing not anymore. Gonna you're gonna you say, hope. well, clearly I suck at this, so you're gonna go home, you're gonna cry, and you're probably, there's a good chance that you might just end that career. And although you might think, well, you know, this is stupid, I still have potential just because one person says I'm bad at this, doesn't mean I'm bad at it. But one person said that you're bad at it. And one person and that you look tough. up to, at least I hope that you look up to your teacher. And that's but tough. especially a singing teacher, if it's like your English teacher or your PE teacher, like, <coughs> that's singing, it's horrible. Who would care about your singing teacher to say you're a horrible singer? That's really going to destroy your dreams. And that's the same thing for math. 
If, if your math teacher says in sixth grade, you cannot do math to save your life. Yo, hey. you need to go to tutorial because you That's are remedial. But if your math teacher says that, probably in eighth grade, are you going to have a positive attitude towards this subject? And are you magically going to say, oh yeah, I get this. Probably not. You're still going to have those emotions like, sixth grade, I failed math, and my teacher said I suck at it. So in eighth grade, well, I guess I'm just going to fail math again because I suck at it. Even though it's a paradigm. Uh-huh. And you're just going to always fail. Yeah. And one thing with that is when I was quickly talking, it's like once you fail math, you're probably not going to have the, the go-go to say, well, let me try to get all A's everywhere else, but I'm still going to fail and I'm still not going to get into the college I won because I can't do well at math. Yeah. You're probably not going to try to do super well in English if you can just... Well, I've already failed because I can't. I, I, I physically can't do this, so I'm just going to... that I have in education, though, is that I can, I can open the door for you, and I can lead you to the water, and I can explain everything about how great the water is. But all I can do is open that door. You have to walk through. All I can do is lead you to the water. You have to drink it. That... that uh, to that end, I'm there mm -hmm. to facilitate you in everything then. Whatever it is that you need, you come to me and you ask. But there has to be a partnership. And education has to be about a partnership. But what made them not want to ask? What, 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 what went wrong to say, I'm not even going to try in this class? Because I think that's the case with a lot of kids. Although their teacher is well, doing their job well, I, they, they just don't care enough to try. I can tell you that there are, there are some students that I've had that say that summer school is just easier. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot less time. I have an entire semester's worth of school in three weeks. Um, it's a focused and concentrated three weeks, but I get to go from class to class every class that I failed. So uh, to me, it's easier to do it during the summer, and I'm bored during the summer anyway. So it's easier to do it during the summer than it is to do it during. The Aren't you year. bored during the school year when you're not doing your work and trying? Let's be honest. I would say that that to me, if I'm not actively I'd rather engaged, I'd rather go during the school year when I'm still going anyways, and try to be engaged in the classroom than to go three weeks during the summer when I when I can optionally be home doing we're, nothing. We're on a block schedule, which means that we have 90-minute classes. Mm -hmm. At the maximum, we have 90. At the minimum, we have 80-minute classes. So if I'm going to be a student that during that 80 minutes just sits there and daydreams or That's just tries, boring. To, tries That's to get boring. away with playing a game on my phone or tries to get away with texting on my phone or... Or is desperately trying to entertain myself in some way other than just simply by becoming actively in, engaged. I'm always I'm in always what's bored when the teacher doesn't have a lesson and all I have to do is wait 20 minutes until the bell. That always bores me because I can't go and talk to someone. Well, okay, can but I can't go out and go to another room and talk to my friend. I can't go home and play a game or edit a video. I can't do that. I just have to sit there. And Most look kids at a get ceiling. on their phone and start playing Fortnite. Uh huh. But <laughs> and they love teachers that that end the class early. But that's one of the things that what I do I'm on my fearful phone is... of with this new principal because he is going to really enforce this whole you teach from the bell mm -hmm. to the bell, and then mm -hmm. he's going to let all of his favorite teachers do whatever the heck they want to do. And I'm going to be teaching my butt off. Let's hope he hates everyone equally. Let's just hope he hates everyone equally. Because I think that's the case with him. I think he's just like, all of you suck. All of you have done something wrong. So I'm in a bad, 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 bad mood. Especially you. You drama for mama. Ugh. Well, what I hate is that they don't ever come in to watch me do anything. And then, and then they, they assume that you're a bad yeah. teacher. And then they make assumptions. Well, she teaches Has he ever theater, seen you why teach? The kids the kids like me only because I teach theater. No, he's never sat long enough to watch me teach anything. <laughs> you know, and when you come in and watch a teacher do one lesson about one thing, they might for be 10 testing. Minutes. If you if you decide to go in on the day that they're testing, you're not seeing them teach, you're seeing them monitor. You monitor is completely different than teaching. Or if you 
if you have them come in at the last 10 minutes of the bell right before spring break and they don't have a lesson plan, so they're just sitting trying to grade papers, trying to grade final exams, let's say, and they're just letting the kids do whatever. If I've that's had the one time. Walk in during that time, during a time like that, and it's, it's like it's terrible. What do they you don't have a done? lesson. No, no, you don't, and you shouldn't have a lesson at that time. And the lesson is that the kids are commingling and doing whatever it is that they need to do mm -hmm. to get get through the day. Um, but that happens so rarely in my room, and they, the the administrators assume that that kids love theater because we don't do anything. Um, they love theater because all we do is play, you know, and that's not, to me, that's not theater. Mm -hmm. Never has been like theater for us, anyway. So why don't we move on to yeah. some you techie have topics? Age restrictions are here. Age, age restrictions. restrictions. You know why I was hard. complaining about that? It's because I recently purchased an M for M game, an M for Mature game, yeah. um, because my parents, my caregivers said, you know what, I think he's mature enough to play that. So I went, I, I was going to download it, purchase it, and download it on Steam. And then said, well, what is your birth date? And if I was thinking, I was like, I better be below, I better be above 18. Because they're going <laughs> to, it's an ember mature game. But not thinking, I, I inserted my birth date, I'm under the age of 18. So of course it was like, this contains age restricted content and you cannot move forward. And what ticked me off about that is maturity is not defined by age. And although it's a good way to say, no, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to say since you're only 14 years old, I'm going to say that this might be a bit too mature for you just saying that. But <laughs> to be honest, if your parents say, well, I, I believe that you're okay with that. If, if they say that, but they're still, it, let's say even you are buying the game for me and they're like, oh, what's his birthday? Okay, let me insert his birthday. Oh, I can't buy it now because he's too young. If, if you didn't have the technical prowess to reset the cookies or open it in another browser window or something, you would not have gotten that game, something that you as a consumer want. I think it's a bad move on the part of a business. So why, do you, so why do you suppose that they restrict it by age? I mean, this particular thing, I can tell you, I've watched you play the game. and um, It's not a good game. It, it's a game that you have fun playing. Oh, it's it. a good game, but it is not a good but game. It, you, you can get very, you know I can what I'm see saying. that, that somebody it's GTA who can be 5. very, yeah, GTA 5, and somebody who can be very influenced easily, easily yeah. influenced, could be very, very influenced by this It's like game after it's I heard not... them say all those cuss words for a while, I was worried that I was going to come downstairs well, yeah, and be like, F, just, F, F, yeah, F, F, Yeah, because it just <laughs> becomes a very normal, mm -hmm. I mean, you're just hearing it and you're watching these people be very normal about how they mm -hmm. respond to it and how it just doesn't, it's it's not something that affects them. And I've had students that are like that where I've, you know, I've gone to um, the, the support help teacher and I've said in, well I I have to go because that's something that I have to do or did last year hopefully this year or not. But, she's an idiot um, but I know one girl left and I you know I had my eyes like like saucers they were like this big I'm like that girl has a mouth on her like a truck driver I mean she was just <laughs> every every other word was F and, and she said oh geez you should have you should have heard her like last that. year she's gotten better you know it's just because that's how her whole family talks and and that's, you know, so it's something that you're easily influenced by. And, and she, since she's she doesn't exposed understand to that. Why, why other people don't talk like that. Or she doesn't even hear that we're not talking. Or she doesn't even hear that we that talking. It's like saying the to her. Like that. It's like saying the to her. And um, and it's just another, it's, it's an adjective that works as an adverb that works as a verb that works as a noun that works as She doesn't everything. realize okay. that it's a bad word she because it is some fan upon her and household. That, and that people are very... Put off and are very insulted and are very harassed and are very, you know, um, taken back by that particular word. Anyway, um, there are kids that are like that. Anyway, so this game, this um, GTA Five, this GTA Five, it is, you know, the, the two main characters are horrible drug they, dealers yeah, and they're, murderers they're, and gangbangers. They, they obviously they if they grand theft auto. That's what they do for for a living. And if you've got to shoot this guy to get away to save your own life, well then that's what you need to do. And I guess and life shouldn't be like war. And when they emulate it as something that's perfectly normal, yes, I can see why they're going to give it an M rating. So when you say that I might be mature enough to handle this, well I thought 
for a you know a free play game. It's like a, a free range game. What do they call those? Where you can and I certainly you don't the reason to... why I purchased GTA Five is not for the storyline at all. I purchased it because it's a free range game. I can drive around. I can. It's just like the games that I played as a kid and I really liked. That's why I purchased and it. it it's really it's, I really like that kind of design and that's why I bought it. And there were games that you played as a kid. And unfortunately, when when you were four and five years old and you were playing the Xbox for the first time, um, you played the games. And we had games for you, obviously. Mm -hmm. We had Legos and we had um, the, the B-movie. And we had, we mm -hmm. had nice, complacent, simple you know rated g games for you to, to play but you we also had games that your dad played mm -hmm. and um there was one in particular that did have some swearing but it was very minimal and it was a first person shooter game but when the person am i going around shot, shooting up schools yeah i i wasn't shoot, you weren't it was he was a mercenary so he was he was chasing a guy that was a legitimate how we would how normal people would describe a bad guy a guy that that maybe didn't deserve vigilante justice but deserved justice of some kind i mean he deserved to either be in jail or he deserved to in some way be punished. but i guess the point okay, of and this... that was the idea of that game and mm -hmm. gt5 gta5 it's the point is to kill people and break the law and, and if, get as much money as you can and, and steal all wanna, these cars because you want them. And if you want to drive that really, really nice car... All you have to do is hold down F for a few seconds and then you have it. And you have to steal it. <laughs> and it, I, it I, I be... hate stealing cars in that game. I'm like, like... And you did it all the time when you played the saboteur. But you did it when you played the saboteur because you were fighting against the, this one particular really mm -hmm. evil, horrible Nazi who hung his own men mm -hmm. and and tortured people and did terrible things and you were fighting against him mm -hmm. so, i was with the french it was world war ii yeah so you would steal cars but it was so that i could protect myself and get to a place to do something good for those people right and it was a horrible thing that you stole the car and that one person that you stole it from wasn't very appreciative <laughs> but <laughs> you're having a pretty but bad in day. Grand Theft Auto Five. I mean, it is the point and, of it and, is to just and oh, it, I want that race car. It looks fast. And then the owner gets his gun out and starts shooting at you as you drive away. And, and then in I order shoot at to him. Live, yeah, you have to shoot back at him. And then when the police come, I have to shoot at the police. To, or I have to, to run save away your from life, them. Or you have to yeah. Or you you have to run away from them. And the funny thing about it is that the very next day. You wake up in a hospital. Or you walk out of the the jailhouse. Mm -hmm. it, it takes one day, and you're right back in the game. You're right back mm -hmm. playing the game, you know? So it is. I mean, for kids that would be very influenced or very easily influenced, I can really see how that culture, that idea of culture, needs to be rated. And now. I guess so. to play devil's advocate on my statement, you're still developing your mind until you're like, 18 or so you're, you're developing your mind always but you're really developing it at those ages and to just to even if you know that you're mature even to sub to and you know what's right show and you wrong you know that what, stuff what, what you should do and what you shouldn't do and you know that still in a car and is it's also a... it's also for the bad parents that don't teach their kids right from wrong so and don't care if it says M on it or if it says T on it. They just don't care. They just or buy they the game so because their kids say, I want that they game. they do think that it's okay that if you really want something bad enough, it doesn't matter <laughs> whether you steal it or not. But, you get it but whatever then it you, isn't, you want. But then it isn't the game that's teaching their kids that. It's just enhancing that. But if the parents just were like, oh, I'll just buy you this game. I haven't taught you the good lessons yet, but I'm just going to buy you that. And then they learn from that game. That's their only basis for the lesson. Because their parents never taught them that. They're going to grow up to be shot. a game banger. So, yeah, so they learned you better be a good shot. You better be quick at stealing the car. And you better be quick at hot wiring it. You better, you just got to, you just got to be quick at these things. Mm -hmm. you, you, and and the, the more you, the more you practice, the better you get. The better you get, um, the more you're going to have. So that's how you get ahead in the world. And that's the, that's the idea of success. But it just, that's ticked, my kind of hard work. But Not, it just ticked me off that I win to buy a game. 
and I entered my birth date, and I had to go through all of these hoops to try to just buy it, to just money. look at it. It's your hard-earned uh -huh. money, you know, it's, and it's not that... If, if the parent was there, if the parent... Because it, it's up to the parent, and even if... The, the restrictions are in place to make sure that nothing bad can happen, but it's still up to the parent, always, always. And if the parent says, well, you better not lie about your age online. I know you're a great kid. I know you're not going to be influenced by this, but you better not lie about your age online. And you enter that in, not lying about your age, and you can't buy it right? just because of that. Right. That's what made me mad. Yeah, so age restrictions are hard because it's just a number. And I honestly, I think that it's for the better most of the time. But again, maturity is not defined by age, not at all. It's no. your experiences. If, if you, it's what your parents teach you. So just to say that, oh, you're 17 and a half. I know that you're not mature enough for this. You're going to go and blow up the world if you play this game. No, well, that's how I'm not shooting up schools. I don't have... I, I don't do stuff like that, even though I played first-person shooters. I don't kill people. I think killing people is the worst thing you could ever do. I think it's grimace. But, but in the we, games that I played, it was a score. But we we know as a society that perhaps at the age of 13, you oh, are finally geez, mature horrible. enough to be home by yourself. And we know that at the age of 18, that you can sign up for the draft and go off to war and fight for your country. And we know that at the age of 21, you can legally purchase a firearm and drink alcohol. Drink alcohol. And at the age of 18, you are old enough to make the decision whether you want to smoke tobacco or not. And you can mm -hmm. legally purchase it by that age. Um, we always place an age, a number, ahead of your ability to actually make a warranted, educated, wise decision. And even though you knew you were mature enough to handle this game, you still came to both your father and I to ask our permission whether or not we wanted you to have this game. But what I'm I might ask you about any game. You would. But <laughs> what I am completely gobstopped about what you know completely red-eyed about is that this is a game that your friends were upset about your not getting when I was 10 years fifth old grade when you were 10 years old that's and like each and every what? one of them were playing it and they all had parents that I thought had common sense but they every one of and especially one parent in particular or one set of parents in particular that I thought they weren't going to be persuaded by that group think that idea of, well, everybody has it, so I better get it for my child, because if I don't, then they're going to be left out. You, mm -hmm. We chose not to get it for you. We chose not to get it for you because the there, there was no playing from the perspective of the cop. If you played from the perspective of the cop, it mm -hmm. was a dirty cop who was willing to go out and make money I'd doing like really, to play really, from really the perspective of the cop. I would. And I'd prefer that. You started... You started this game saying, let's try not to break any laws. And the first thing that you were supposed to do was... Was rob a bank and then kill 20 cops and then steal a car. And then kill some more cops and then I was ready to start my mission. <laughs> there you go. I stole over $250,000. Yeah. <laughs> and you would not have been able to advance the storyline if you would not have done... That. All of that. Mm -hmm. clear the cops out of here you know but anyway uh, that and that's not to say that the game isn't a great game in fact it's a benchmark for a lot of systems it seems that everybody in the world has played grand theft auto 5 um they in mm -hmm. fact say it's one of the the greatest games one of the greatest selling games next to ghost recon or what is that game called i don't know with i the, don't play games with the that the Black Ops something, something Oh yeah, Call game. of Duty. Call of Duty. There you go. Call of Duty. Yeah. So I'm not saying that it's a bad game. I think it's a very beautifully it's, graphic game. It's a, it's, it's a physically good game. And it, it has it just so doesn't much have dimension a, to it. And, and it has a good story. It just doesn't have a good moral story. It's a well-written story. It's an interesting story. 
but the morals behind it are bad. It's yeah, like saying it's like that... saying a book about murder is a bad book. Right. No, it's a well written book, but the the moral behind it it makes you think good. and feel and, and act and like you should go out like, and kill people. Yeah, and it and it Don't does. Do that. It does. Guys, do not kill people. But I do think that it does something to your psyche. So. Uh huh. So even though I think a billion people are out there playing the game and I think it's great, I do think that it does something to your psyche. That it does make certain things, certain words, certain actions, certain behaviors normal. normal. And, and although you're not going to go out and start saying the N-word all the time, or the F-word it's still, all the time, it's still a lot more normal to you than it was before right. when and you play I, that and, game. And maybe that makes you more acceptable, more, uh, more human, more, you know... And, and I don't think that we should keep people in, in bubbles and make them not realize that, well, that's how the real world is. But the game forces you to play. Well, it doesn't force you to do anything. I mean, you don't have to play the game. But if you want to if experience you wanna, If you the want game. to experience the game, you play from the perspective of a criminal, period. That's mm-hmm. the perspective that you get to play from. So, um, you know, in that sense, it is the, that psyche. So, I don't know. You're right. I we, we have to start reading Truman Capote in Cold Blood. We have to read <laughs> well, it from the perspective. <laughs> yeah, we have to. We have to read it. That's something that we're forced to do because it's a it's a school a summer project. reading assignment. Let's hope mm-hmm. that we don't finish this summer reading assignment and have your teacher say, Yeah, you know what? I I just don't feel like reading all of these. I'm mm-hmm. gonna give you all hundreds and we'll move on from there. Mm-hmm. So I guess to move on to our next topic of ranting, it's another techie thing. I guess I wanted to, I guess it's kind of along the lines of graphic design. So I designed all new graphics in Photoshop. If you noticed, I do have a new logo, a new banner, stuff like that. I have new uh, starting things. The colors are different for the stream. It's all different. I guess the first part of rant for that is that my computer is slow. I have an FX 8300 bulldozer processor aka an old processor um clocked at 3.8 gigahertz oh, aka nice mama. oh my god ah! thank you um but it chugs in photoshop like seriously i tried to move something chug 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 i tried to add text chug 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 lag chug 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 you want to be on stream there i am you are i am oh well, nice very nice, nice. Hi. What I think we need to do is add multiple camera angles so I can have like a st- like press that button and then you see you and then you see me and then it's like amazing. That's what we should do. Um, but uh, do, do. I figured I've watched the viewer count go from one to three to four to one to two to two. You saw it to go four. to four once. Oh, I think I'm being crazy. Nice. I'm just yeah. And I thought, you know, you're right. Nobody's watching us, so I don't know why I'm not in the stream. It does kind of look weird that you're responding to questions that I'm not. Uh huh. Nobody's there. Mm-hmm. So anyway. So I'd moving like on about uh, chugging Photoshop. Um, it's just kind of annoying to watch it chug, but I do plan to upgrade to a Ryzen processor with the money that I've made from NSA. Um, not like the National Security Agency, but like. Uh, NSA is in the New Scholar Academy. New Scholars. But I am going to upgrade, and I'm really excited about that because it has chugged and chugged and chugged. Uh, the second part is change because I really loved the graphics that I had designed. I absolutely adored them. You did. I thought they were the they best were things well in toilet too. paper. Uh, yeah, I like them. Uh, but you didn't love them, did you? Um... Awkward I don't know. I don't know if I liked them or if I loved them. I thought they were super great. I I thought they were terrific. But when I had to go telling, and design new graphics for MindTech, I just didn't know where to start. And once I started, the colors were off because I added blue and I preferred that. Uh, I, I really liked that orange to black gradient. Just all of that. When I designed it, I didn't look at the graphics for what they were. Something new, something great. I just looked at them as, well, I really like the old like ones, the and I don't know if I want to change it. <laughs> so I, that that was really frustrating yesterday when I was doing, was it yesterday? It wasn't mm. even yesterday. 
No, yesterday we um, played Sims. Did any of you tune in to watch us Did play Sims? Did anyone watch that stream? Sim Sunday? Did anyone see Sim Sunday? Did you watch Sim Sunday? I we bet all you watched didn't. Sim Sunday. You better, you we better watch it tomorrow. Sim. His name is Albert. If you, if you don't watch Alberto it. Alberto the Great, you if can. You don't watch him He's Sunday. a food critic. I'm gonna find you, you need to tune in and watch our I'm Sim Sunday cast. You. That'll be great. Oh. Anyway. So, um, yeah, that's what we did yo, on yo, Sunday. Yo, and yo, you already I had the art bass, done. Bass, bass, bass. Hey, I cranked up the bass. I sound, I sound all bassy now. Oh, listen good. to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just felt like what I was saying was something that didn't need to be heard because you were talking into the microphone. I'm sorry. That's what, okay. What were you saying? You didn't even hear what I had to say. I don't know. I guess it was unimportant. No. I was telling them about the stream. About Sim Sunday. Sims and why they should tune in to watch this. It's an awesome stream. You don't stream. want them to do that, though, because um, you wanted to... Um, last year, you started something called Homework on Sundays or Come Do Homework with Me or something uh -huh. like I that. I didn't like you that did because it just homework. was And it took long. you too long to do your English homework, but you um, are also a big... I don't like playing games because games just really take a lot of time. Yeah, and they, they do. They're they time take wasters. a ton of time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so you got a phone call from your friend um, that was a surprise visitor on our Rantech show. Uh huh. And but he said like, he wanted to come tomorrow and visit. Yeah. I mean, today, actually. But yeah, he called or he yesterday. texted yesterday at 10 and said, hey, can I come? And I felt kind of bad because we had found that faucet online, and so we decided that we were going to tear our sink apart today. And mm -hmm. that's something that's still waiting for me downstairs is the sink. I have to go downstairs and I have to get. Would you to like work to the end up the stream soon then for um, that? Um, probably. But I wanted to talk about um, about his pending visit. So what are you guys thinking about doing? I do not know. I'd like him to come on Friday so we could maybe do a Rantech together or something. Wednesday is July the fourth, which is an important holiday mm -hmm. in America. Maybe do you think we'll be taking that off or not? More than likely. So it's a holiday. Are we going to stream? It's a Wednesday. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have rain tech. Yeah, we'd probably stream. Happy to I four. might have to have a beverage. Is that okay, old Twitch? You're going to be drinking at 10.15 in the morning? Oh, geez. It's That's an alcoholic so. thing to do. <laughs> no, that won't happen. <laughs> My mom is no, not an alcoholic. Okay. <laughs> But it is when, at 6 p.m. When we're barbecuing at 6 p.m., I might have a uh, pina said. colada or something in my hand. Maybe I can't I have should. a pina colada in my hand because my sister took the rum. And then she moved. We were she talking moved. about that. It was like, oh my gosh, how do you just move so quickly? I'm going to take like the rum. That? Is that okay? Uh, what? And I'm going to take the. Uh, I said, yeah. well, I'll take the vanilla. If you're going to take the rum, I'll take the vanilla. Oh, I was going to take the vanilla. Okay, well, we'll split it. <laughs> Who took the vanilla home? <laughs> she did! What the heck happened there? I she did? Know. She did that. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, we can split the vanilla then. That's okay with me. We'll split it. But guess what she did? She took the vanilla! She took it home! Oh, yeah! <laughs> um, I don't get that. Laggy computers are for poor people. Okay. I know. I'm. I'm like. What the heck am I doing over there? Uh, age restrictions. Okay. I think that's it. I, I think, think that's, that's it. it. Um. So. Oh, I, I was gonna complain about Windows licensing also because I was trying to license my version of Windows for Carlito. And it's just kind of difficult sometimes. I don't really know what my rant was there. I was just trying to come up with topics 15 minutes before Well, I'm going to tell you, I like the idea of that age restriction because if we would have had people in here, I think that that would have been a hotbed. Because there are some people who are going to say, well, I've been playing Grand Theft Auto since I was... 10. Yeah. 9. Oh, Nine, geez. 8. eight. Good. Yeah. I mean, it was a popular game. But are game. you going to shoot up the school? It was Probably a popular not. game. Well, I, yeah, I don't think you're going to shoot up the school. I don't think that that people are going to say, and I got the idea of shooting up the school from Grand Theft Auto. They might. Uh, Grand Theft Auto makes me feel like it's perfectly acceptable and if just fine. If they're a crazy person, then yes. But I do think that there are things that... It might influence that, them. You know, we, we give a number to a particular threshold, but then we don't say, um, well, in order to prove that you're a man, John, you need to walk into the land that is forbidden and you need to go on your quest and you need <laughs> to find yourself you know and then and then you will be a man you know well how you know other cultures might define 
manhood or womanhood or adulthood as can you finish these certain tasks and if you can Mm-hmm. Then you're old enough. I guess Not, my last but round is this right here. I this is my round. Look at how my coil is all messed up. That is so annoying, and I'm going to try to fix it. Jeez, look at that. Isn't let's, that annoying? Let's hope you don't have to go all the way to the other end. Holy. <laughs> okay, guys, so thank you for watching the stream. I hope you enjoyed the first ever Ed rant. I know I enjoyed putting it on with you. Did you like a job for Mama? I loved it. Hey, good, I, what good, I'm gonna do good. is I'm gonna I'm gonna take some pictures of my um my sink rant, I know I in its final it state, like and um I'll let you see what it looks like. But right mm -hmm. now I gotta get cracking. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk Wednesday. to you all later on Wednesday, July Fourth.